Let's translate Romans 10, 9. Oti eon omologisis en to stomati, su curion yesun ke pistevsis, en ti cardia su oti, o theos avton, igiren ek necron sothisi. That if you confess and you confess with the mouth of you. What is it that you're confessing? You're confessing Chirion Yesun and if you believe in and if you believe in the heart of you believe specifically that Otheos God raised him from the dead then you will be saved For if you confess with your mouth, specifically the confession is Kyrios Jesus, but because here uh, we have our subject is you, this can't be in the nominative because nominative is for the subject. Due to its function in the sentence, it's accusative. But we know that elsewhere, like 1 Corinthians 12, verse 3, it says, Che udis dinate ipen, Kyrios Jesus, which is a double nominative. The way you say Jesus is Lord in Greek is you say Lord first. Kyrios, and then Jesus, Jesus, Lord Jesus, literally. But it's translated, Jesus is Lord. Why? When it's a double nominative like that, it's a predicate nominative. Jesus is a predicate nominative, which means it's pointing back to Lord. It's translated as with the verb to be as though it's functioning kind of like a predicate adjective. And so what's happening is you have your subject, Kyrios, and then your predicate nominative, Jesus. Jesus is considered a category, a part of, or a state of the former. Sometimes they're identical in exchange. I think that's what we have here. It's not that Jesus is a part of Lord, although I guess you could make a case for that with the concept of the Trinity. But what I think is happening here is Jesus is Lord. They are interchangeable. The Lord is Jesus. Jesus is Lord. But when we look at 1 Corinthians 12, 3, and we look at Philippians 2, 11, Kyrios Jesus is the standard structure. But we can't have the double nominative here in Romans 10, 9. It has to be accusative because of the way the sentence is played out. But it continues. First is the confession. It doesn't have to be in this order, but that's the first thing that Paul lists. The second thing is belief. So first, confession, second, belief, but the order doesn't matter. There is confession and there is belief. Both are present. What is the belief? Well, the confession was done with the mouth. The belief is done with the heart. What is it that you believe? You believe that God raised Jesus from 
the dead. God raised Jesus from the dead. If you make that confession that Jesus is Lord, and if you believe that God raised him from the dead, Paul says, you will be saved. Let's look at the terms. Omologeo, to commit oneself to do something for someone, promise, assure, share common view, be of common mind, to concede that something is factual or true, to acknowledge something ordinarily in public. That's the one we have here. It is a public acknowledgement with your mouth. You are proclaiming Jesus is Lord. You are professing. You are praising something to that effect publicly. It's a profession of allegiance, especially of confessing Christ or the teaching of his community with double accusative. If you confess Jesus as Lord is how it, it is in Romans 10.9, according to BDAG. Take a look at Kyrios, Lord. Gen generically, it can mean one who is in charge by virtue of possession, an owner, master, Lord, lowercase l. You can see here, one is who, uh, who is in a position of authority, Lord or master. However, Kyrios is also used in reference to Jesus. It's also a designation of God. Kyrios is the way the Old Testament Septuagint translates Yahweh. So to say Jesus is Lord, <laughs> that's saying Jesus is God. Jesus is Yahweh. Belief. Pistevo. This is trust. Faith. It's to consider something to be true and therefore worthy of one's trust. And when you add OT, it tells you what to believe. And you believe in your heart. What is the heart? The heart is the seat of physical, spiritual, and mental life. It's the figurative use of heart as the organ of the body. It is the center and source of physical life. But it's the center and source of the whole inner life. Your thinking, your feeling, your volition. So you could translate this believe in your mind for modern day usage here. But what is it that you're believing? You're believing that God raised him, Jesus, from the dead. Agiro. To cause someone to wake from sleep, to cease sleeping, to cause to stand up from a position lower than that of the person rendering assistance, to move to a standing position, rise, get up, to cause to come into existence, raise up, to cause to return to life. The ancients closely associated death with sleep. This was a common euphemism of the raising of Jesus more fully, use of Jesus' resurrection from the dead. 10 9 here. So, what does necros mean? Necron, ek necron. Well, it means dead, but as you can see down here, as substantive. So one who is no longer physically alive, a dead person, a dead body, a corpse. But if you skip down here in prepositional phrases, often without the article, which we don't have our article here. So we're left with ek necron. So it's just simply from the dead. It's plural. You could say from among the dead because he was dead along with all the other dead. But God raised him, brought him back to life. What is sozo? To preserve or rescue from natural dangers and afflictions. To save, keep from harm, preserve, rescue, save from death, save from disease, keep or preserve, thrive, prosper, get on well. To save or preserve from transcendent danger or destruction. Save from eternal death, from judgment, from all that might lead to such death. And that's what we have here. In passive, which is what we have, you can see it's second singular future passive indicative. It's sozo, but because of the thes, tense formative, we have future passive. Be saved, attain salvation. 
So that's what's going on with our vocabulary. I do want to point out what's going on with the syntax. Aeon homologesis. Aeon pistevsis. The two verbs here are subjunctive mood. Subjunctive mood plus aeon. That is third class condition in Greek. There's a couple notes there. Third class condition is simply uncertain of fulfillment. We don't know that the readers, we don't know that the hearers are going to confess. We don't know that they're going to believe. That's up in the air. Let's take a look at conditional sentences here. Importance of conditional sentences. This is Wallace's Greek grammar beyond the basics. We have first class condition, second class condition, third class condition, fourth class condition. We're looking at third class condition. First class would be with E. We don't have E, we have Aeon. Second class would be along the lines of Aeon, but it's this is not a second class condition. Uh, I can show you why. Second class condition would be... Second class conditions are contrary to fact. Assuming of an untruth for the sake of the argument. It has on, not a on, and a secondary tense in the indicative mood. So on plus indicative. That's not what we have here. So instead, we have third class. Third class condition often presents the condition as uncertain of fulfillment, but still likely. There can be exceptions, but what it is, is aeon followed by subjunctive. The apodosis can have any tense or any mood. Now, the third class condition can simply be a simple if A then B. If A, you confess and believe, then B, you'll be saved. And that's referred to as a present general condition. And that's more of like a present time. It indicates nothing as to the fulfillment of the protasis, which is simple. If A, then B. Or it could be a hypothetical situation or one that probably will not be fulfilled, or it could be a more probable future occurrence. This might be what we have here. More probable future occurrence. The third class condition depicts what is likely to occur in the future. What could possibly occur? So, what is possible in the future is that if we confess and believe, future more probable, we will be saved. I think it's just stating the facts. If you confess, if you believe, both are needed, confession with belief. This is a profession, a public profession or proclamation, public affirmation, and an inward in your heart, in your thinking, in your mind. If you have those, you will be saved. That if you confess with your mouth, Jesus is Lord and if you believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead, you will be saved. If you liked this video, please hit the like button. Also, let me know in the comments. Please let me know in the comments what verse you want to see next. Until next time.